Hey, my name is Brian Dale. I'm the Director of Education at Pyramind. I teach Mixing and Mastering. I teach Pro Tools 201 and 210M. I'm an expert on Pro Tools version 7, version 8, version 9. I'll do 10 one of these days. Uh, I do a lot of mixing and mastering professionally, and today we're going to get into doing some drum routing with Strike. And whether or not you have Strike, this should hopefully be applicable to you if you have Strike or BFD or Battery or Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer. A lot of different programs work this way now where you can do routing out to tracks and get into some more complicated uh, compression workflows and such. So let's get into it. We're going to do this in three different parts, uh, part one, two, and three. So part one, basically we're going to create our session, set up some tracks, maybe get into creating some user kits and routing to some audio tracks. So here we go. I'm going to hit Command N to make a new session. I'm going to hit Command Down Arrow to create a blank session. So wherever you want to work, you know, I generally, if I'm going to, if my, if I'm going to go to CD, I'm usually going to work at 24 or 44. Although here, since we're going to go to video at the end of the day, I'm going to work at 48. Just going to go to stereo mix in our I/O settings, and we'll just stay at 24 bit for today. We're going to call this Strike Tip and Trick One. Here we go. All right, so now that we're in here, let's hit Shift Command N, which is your new track key command. I want to make a stereo instrument track. So in this window, if I hit Command Right Arrow, that'll make stereo. And if I hit Command Down a couple of times or a few times, we'll get to instrument track. Hit Enter and here we go. Strike has to be a stereo instrument as a lot of these things do. So. I'm a big fan of naming your tracks so you know what's going on and you don't look like that guy with audio one through a thousand. Let's go multi-channel instrument strike. So strike, if you're used to something else like BFD or what have you, you always forget with strike, the first thing you have to do is just grab some kit, whatever it is, because there's no default loaded kit. So here, maybe I'll just choose alt rock. Like I said, we'll get into how to modify your drum kits in a little bit here. So then, from here, I want to see my instrument pane. Now, Strike strike is a little bit unusual in that it, is, it defaults to being a pattern-based drum program. So if I were to just get in here and open my MIDI window, which let's make a little bigger. By the way, I hit Control equal to open my MIDI window. If I get in here and just draw a note, it will probably just start playing something. So I hit F10 to go to my pencil tool. Yes. Hey, I'm a drummer. I'm playing it now. Ah, that's not what I want. I want to write my own beats, act like I'm a musician and a producer, which, in fact, I am. So, if this is just something to know about Strike, if you go to channel two instead of channel one, now it's not going to default to doing all those patterns. Now it's just going to be individual notes. And all these different drum programs are mapped basically the same way. If you find your kick drum, then you can find above that you're going to have snares, above that you're going to have hats and cymbals and so on. So generally speaking, once you find your kick drum, you should know pretty much where you are. So control equal again to get back to this window. I want to make a four bar selection. So actually I'm just hitting forward slash to jump into that counter up there. Once I get to length, I can hit four, enter. You hit option F, fill screen with selection. Lots of key commands I know. So let's hit Command tilde back over to our MIDI window. I might turn on Dynamic Transport doing this. That's Control Command P. What Dynamic Transport allows me to do is lock in a loop so when I get in there and start drawing in notes, it doesn't immediately jump to my edit selection. So from here, let's just get a basic beat going and then maybe we'll modify our kit a little bit. So I want to change my grid size a little bit. You see that? So I'm hitting Control Option plus and minus to make your grid bigger or smaller. Now with the pencil tool, it's all about the pencil tool in the MIDI window. So if I go to any of them below freehand, line through random actually, and I'm just going to go line, then when you click and drag, you get a row of notes like that, rather than on the first tool, freehand, if you click and drag, you get a long note. I don't really want that long note business here doing drums. It's a lot more handy to get a row like that. So I'm going to go back to line. Then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say, don't follow grid for my default note value. I don't want them to be fat notes like the grid. So I'm just going to go to 16th note here. So now, if I find my hi-hat, which I just did, 
just click and drag, I get a row. And there we go. Let's, oh, that rhymed. Let's speed it up a little bit just to keep our keep ourselves awake. Maybe we'll go up to 200 here, see how that sounds. All right, it's a little better. So now that we have some hats in there, let's get a kick drum in there. There, there's our kick drum. The cool thing about dynamic transport is we have this loop locked in here, but if we just click up here in the timeline, or you can hit one and two on your numeric keypad to fast forward and rewind, we can move our play start around while we still have that loop locked in. So then I can just click over to three here and start there. Let's hear what the whole thing sounds like there. Not trying to make the most amazing beat in the world here. The point is to get into some routing. So let's get a couple open hats in there. All right, not bad. Let's get a symbol in there too. There's a ride symbol. There's a crash. So then if we want to just double that out, maybe make it eight bars, I can hit option and that turns my pencil tool into a selector. If you're ever working in headphones, you've probably done this where you select something and you do that and you blow your head off. So a little trick here is, if you hit option, turn it into a selector. If I drag on the bottom of the screen, it blows you up. If you drag on the top of the screen, it does not. So now I'm just gonna hit command D, duplicate. Maybe I'll get out of dynamic transport for a second, hit shift return, have our whole selection. So now we have our eight bar loop. Maybe we'll speed it up just a little more. All right, so we have our loop. Now, right now, our loop is just coming out of the stereo outputs of the strike track itself. And we can get a lot fancier than that. And by getting fancier, I mean we can take the kick and send that out to a track. And we can take the snare and send that out to a track, and so on and so on. And that allows us to do a lot more, both in processing and in mixing. Having your drums just in one stereo track is extremely, extremely limiting, and you probably won't be able to get your mix where you'd like to with that. That's really the point of this whole lesson. So within Strike, if you open this up, if you click over to your mix page, you have all these settings in here, and let's click on this little arrow to fold that out of the way, and you can see then all your tracks that you have in here. So I'm gonna just option click, on kick, snare, and hats just to get that fader up to unity. I'm going to also option click on the pan to just get them in the middle for the moment because we're going to route this stuff outward. So then, then I'm just going to say, okay, kick, you're going to go out one. Snare, you're going to go out two. Hats, you're going to go out three. We did, I think, drop a ride in there. We'll say that's four. Trash, you'll be five. And now these are all stereo outs. You don't necessarily have to use them as such. And because I don't know if I actually use that trash or that crash, I'm going to just put them both out to five. <clears throat> so we've got one, two, three, four, and five going out. And then you have this little button too, which if I let the mouse over do its thing, it will tell you that it routes the overhead signal through this channel's inserts, fader, and output instead of the master overheads channel. So in other words, you get more of this signal in here, which you can mess with and kind of design your sound a little bit, routing out to that output that we're doing. So I'm going to click that button for all these guys. Let's jump over here and not forget our crash symbol. All right, we're good there anyway. So then we got to make the tracks to return all these things to. Now, for me, I want my kick and snare and hats and even the ride to be mono, where, and now that could, that could create a much larger discussion, but generally speaking, you're going to get more punch out of a mono track than a stereo track. So I want my kick and snare and hats to be mono. So even though this is a stereo output, I don't necessarily have to use both sides of it. So I'm going to make four mono tracks for our kick, snare, hats, and ride 
and I'm going to make one stereo track for our trash and our crash. So I'm going to hit Shift Command N, going to say four mono audio tracks, and then I'm going to hit Command Plus, and I'm going to say one stereo audio track. Now I want to do audio tracks because I'm definitely going to want to print this. You could do this to auxes in, as well and it will work, but if you just leave the stuff routed from your MIDI instrument out to your aux tracks, when you start doing some more complicated processing, sometimes you might get some phase problems. It depends on you, the specifics of your system, whether you're HD, LE, a lot of things like that, but at the end of the day, I do like to print my MIDI to audio tracks. So we've got our five new tracks, and now let's go through and name them. I have to click on the first nameplate right there, double click. Once you get that open, I can say kick. Then I can go command right, and it jumps right to that next window. So kick, snare, hats, ride, command right again, and then I'll just call this symbols. Then on the input each, each of these tracks, I want to go plug in, strike, and I'm just going to go one left. See how I can choose either side, but because I want to be mono, I'm just going to choose a side. One left. Great. Plug in, strike, two left. Plug in, strike, three left. Plug in, strike, four left. And then because this symbols one is stereo, we'll go plug in, strike, five. So it's taking both sides. Now if you want, well first of all, let's see, let's see what kind of signal we're getting into these tracks. So these are all selected. If I hit shift option, which is apply to selected, and then hit input, input enables all of them at once. So it looks like we have looks like we have some pretty good level in there. At this point, you can actually mess with your faders. I mean, treat this like it's a microphone signal coming in. If your kick is not hot enough, turn it up. If your snare is not hot enough, turn it up. I want I want to have some decent level in here. But it looks pretty good at this point. Rock. The ride was a little weak. Let's turn that guy up. Option click that up to Unity. Ah, there's the ride. Now, the reason I wanted to make all these mono in the instrument itself and panned into the middle is because I'm going to take care of the panning here later. I would generally choose a perspective. Uh, I would either choose audience perspective or player perspective. Uh, since I'm a player, I usually do player perspective. And what that means is, if you're playing the drums right-handed, your hi-hat's going to be over here, your ride's going to be over there, cymbals, toms going across that way. And then if you're adding other instruments, if you're doing player perspective, I would have the low keys on the piano over here and the high keys over there. So whichever you choose, whether it's player or audience, just stay consistent. So here I'm going to say ride. Okay, I'm going to push you over to the right a little bit. And hats, I'm going to push you over to the left a little bit. Symbols I'm going to leave wide, but let's turn them up too. Everything else looks pretty good, pretty good levels. A little trick if you want to have fatter meters, three finger click on them, control, option, command, click. Now I've got some fatter meters. It's just the little things. So from there, <clears throat> we've basically got the routing set up. If you want to get in and really mess with your drum kit from this level, a couple main things you can do. One is in here, in your in your mixer within the plugin, you can mess with mess with all this stuff, your overheads. Let's just solo the kick for a minute. And let's solo both strike and okay. Ah, actually, let's solo just the kick. So if we solo the kick, you can really listen to what this different stuff does. That that's doing nothing because the room actually is still going out of the mains up here. But the center, definitely doing something. On axis, definitely giving us a lot punchier signal. I, I kind of like that. Front, let's see what that does. A lot less. <clears throat> but so each of these, you can spend some time, get in here and play with this stuff and create your sound design a little bit. If you want to actually change kit pieces, you can go in here and see I folded this guy down, and then you can go into kits, preset kits, and then you can fold any of these down and anything you want. I don't want to get too far into this. I just want to show you where this stuff is. You could open up hats, and then you have all these hats, and you could just simply drag a hat onto a hat, and it's going to change it up. So if you want to modify your kit and really get creative, that's how you do it. But for now, I think we have a pretty good, pretty good kit that we can work with to do some processing. 
The last thing I'm going to do in this first part of this little lecture is just print these tracks. And then from there, we'll go on to uh, getting into some processing and some additional routing. But one more thing I want to do here that I almost forgot is Strike is a little bit different than a lot of these other drum programs in that you'll notice there's still stuff coming out of Strike itself. Even though we've routed all this stuff outward, we still have signal coming out right there. So that's unusual. Most plugins like BFD, et cetera, will not have anything coming out anymore, but these still do, and that's a function of these right here, your room mics and your talkback mics. Those are still coming out of the mains, and I actually want to keep that. So I'm going to do one last thing here. I'm going to take this output of Strike itself, this output, choose some bus, 1112, whatever's open, right click, rename, zoom out so I can see my rename field. We'll call this strike out. And then I'm just going to make another stereo audio track, shift command N to make your track. And I'm going to call this <coughs> strike out. Record enable that guy too. Well, first set the input bus strike out that we made right up there. Input enable, shift click up to the top, hold shift option again for apply to selected, record enable all these guys. And let's just print that. All right, that is the end of part one. See you soon for part two. Thank <laughs> you.